I was working on my game the other day and I wanted to add a silhouette to the character so that you can see him when he's obscured by other objects. And uh, I found a pretty good way to do that. Um, a lot of the methods that I had seen involved a lot of shaders and changing viewports and duplicating objects. Uh, but the method that I came up with is incredibly simple. It only took a few minutes to add to the game. And although it is kind of hacky and doesn't give you a ton of control over how the silhouette looks, you cannot beat how easy it is to make. So uh, I'm going to go over how to do that here. I created this little spike solution in Godot 4 uh, using some free assets from Itch. Uh, and this is just to show it off and so I can share it on GitHub. But uh, the same solution works for Godot 3.5 and 4, so it should work no matter what version you're using. So, in order to get that silhouette, the first thing we're going to do is create two different versions of the sprite sheet for our character. Uh, you're going to have the normal sprite sheet, and then we're going to create a secondary one that is the same, only all of the pixels are fully opaque white. Uh, and we're going to use that as a mask for the silhouette. You can edit that sprite in a sprite or paint or whatever program you're using. Once you have those two sprites though, we're going to take our normal sprite and we're going to duplicate that twice and set both of those duplicates as children of the main sprite. I'm going to name that first one mask1 and then I'm going to name the next one mask2. And then we're going to set both of these textures to our new fully opaque white mask sprite that we created. Uh, I'm also going to attach a script to these, uh, and the script just follows the parent animation frames so that the animations sync up between the silhouette and the actual character. So we're going to take this first mask, uh, we're going to set the ordering to a uh, z-index just above the main sprite, and then we're going to set the material to a new canvas item material with a blend mode of add. Then the second mask, we're going to set the ordering to a z-index that's very large, like 1000, and then we're going to set the material to a new canvas item material that is set to subtract. And effectively how the, the silhouette works is these two overlapping masks are going to counteract each other until some object obscures the lower mask and it's just going to leave that subtractive mask on top of whatever object is obscuring the player. Uh, right now though, uh, it's fully black because we're uh, with those two masks, we're actually overloading the pixel buffer. There's not enough color information on the standard definition range uh, on the renderer. So we're going to go to the visibility options with both of those masks selected. And we're going to set the modulate color to a very dark yellow. Uh, and with this method, it is going to discolor your sprite very, very slightly. Uh, but that might be worth it to you, that might be too much. Uh, and there is technically a way to counteract that that I'll go over later. But you're just gonna select that uh, arbitrary dark yellow color, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Uh, we now have a silhouette, it does work in the editor. Uh, you just have to set the, uh, the Z index of whatever you want the silhouette to show up on. You have to set that to something in between the z-index of these two masks. So this tree is set to 10 now, which is between 1 and 1000, and the silhouette shows up over it. I did mention that that arbitrary yellow color that we had to set both of the masks to is because we're using standard definition range. If you're able to change the rendering to the high definition range, uh, using either the setting or the settings on a viewport inside of the scene editor. Um, that will give you more flexibility. Uh, here, if we overlap this, this is using that original color. It gives us kind of a faded silhouette. Uh, but with HDR rendering, we can uh, jack that all the way up to the top, and then you'll get a fully blue silhouette instead. That's it. Hopefully that's useful for somebody. Uh, the project is up on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the comments uh, if anybody wants to take a look. 
But even though it's a hacky solution, even though it, it's not perfect, uh, it is a very quick way to add silhouettes, and I, I imagine for 90% of games it's gonna do just fine.